everyone, it's Neha again, and do you remember I read and, and do you remember Marvin Red Post class president? I said I was going to be reading Horrible Harry in, in Invasion. Well, now I have it. It's not by it's not by Dean Gottman or it's not by Lewis Thatcher. It's by Susie Clean Klein Cleaner Klein. Okay. So I have that book. It has four chapters. Very short book, but I'm going to be reading it. Okay, so it's Horrible Harry in the Ant Invasion. Contents. There are four chapters in it. Very short book. Chapter 1, Horrible Harry and the Ant Invasion. That's the title of the book. When Harry and I walked into room 2B, we couldn't believe our eyes. Okay, Harry and I. I is Doug. Harry's not telling the story. Doug is telling the story. That's why I said, when Harry and I walked into room 2B, we couldn't believe our eyes. So Doug's telling the story. I is Doug. Look at that, I said. Wow, what is it, Doug? Harry asked me. It's an ant city. Ants, Harry grinned. Then he rubbed his hands together. Harry loves anything that crawls. Slithers or slides. And slithers or slides. He loves slimy things, hairy things, and creepy things. Harry loves anything horrible. The ants haven't arrived yet, Miss Mackle said. But they should come any day in, now in the mail. The mail, Sydney said. Made a face. Ew, ye. There's gonna be ants in Miss Mackle's mailbox. He flashed his white teeth. Nito, he said. Are we gonna have an ant monitor? Miss Daisy looked at the list of jobs on the ant monitor chart. On the monitor chart, we're gonna need one. Would you be interested, Harry? Harry smiled so wide, his silver filling showed in the back. Like this. Miss Michaels printed Harry's name next to the ant monitor. One, one week later, when the class was lined up in the hall by the office. Okay, if I read that sentence. There's, um, Doug. And there's, um, Harry. It looks like Harry. Ants, Harry. Fish, fish, song, Lee. Weeper, Mary. Plants, Doug. Doug is the one who's telling the story. Paper, Sydney. Messenger, Ida. When Miss Mackle checked her mailbox, she found a small manly envelope in it. When she opened it up, she pulled out a plastic vial. There were a lot of black hairy things moving around in it. The ants! The class shouted. The school security, Mrs. 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 Foxworth, po poked her head around the corner. Ants? She replied. We're going to observe their behave behavior, Miss Mackle said. Mrs. Foxworth tried to smile, but she was shaking so much that the pencil was sitting that that, that was the the pencil that was sitting on her ear dropped to the floor. Harry picked it up and handed it to her. Are you afraid of ants? Mrs. Foxworth ran back to her typewriter. Harry grinned. She's afraid of ants. Well, Miss Michael, the direct the, the directions on the small package say to put the vial in a refrigerator for ten minutes so the ants will go to sleep. It's easier to put ants and sleeping ants into the in the ant city. Look, there's the ants. There's um. Miss Knuckle. She has a little jar in her hand. It has some ants. And that's the end of the book. Harry's type forwarder. I'm the ant monitor. I'll take it to the teacher's refrigerator for you. This is Miss Michael. Raise your eyebrows. Can I take an assistant? Harry asked. Harry asked. 
Miss Mackle nodded as she looked at the waving hands. I picked Doug, Harry said. I beamed. Beamed means this. Miss Mackle looked re relieved. We, we walked down the hall to the teacher's room with a vial of hands. When we opened the refrigerator, we looked for a place to set the vial. <coughs> Gee, like that. There's so much dyed soda, diet soda in here. It's hard to find room. Harry finally set the vial on top of the container of banana, banana yogurt. Then we walked back down the hall. Miss Foxworth was, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Foxworth was coming toward us. Hello, boy, she said in a cheery voice. Taking your morning break? Harry asked. Miss, Miss, Mrs. Foxworth nodded. Thought I would have a little banana yogurt. Harry and I stopped. We looked at each other. Mrs. Foxworth closed the teacher's room door. Then we heard a shrill shriek, scream. Harry and I walked back to room 2B, laughing. Ten minutes later, Miss Mackle, Miss, Miss Mackle brought the vial of ants back to the classroom. Everyone gathered around a science table. I think I should do this, boys and girls, Miss Mackle said. Some ant spikes. I don't want any of you to touch one. Is that clear? Everybody, everyone nodded their heads. Miss Mackle took the roof off an ant house. Then she took the cap of the vial. We all watched, watched her pour the ants into the small opening. Their bodies look like raisins, Ida said. That's the way they sleep, Ida. All rolled up, Miss Mackle replied. Ooh, yes, he groaned. They're gross. The teachers looked at the teacher looked at Sydney. We are scientists. We are observing ant behavior. Someday, someday, someone in room two B may be a great scientist and make a great discoveries and discoveries in the lab. Harry and I pointed at each other. We were planning to be great scientists some, someday, just as Miss Miss Mackle. Finished pouring the sleep ants into the hole. The ants at the bottom of the vial started to wake up. Godness, Miss Mackle ex exclaimed. Sydney screamed when the three ants crawled out of the vial and onto the science table. Miss Mackle stood up. No one will ever touch anything. I'll get the ants. One is on the floor, Mary called. Miss Mackle, Miss Mackle craw crawled after it. She put a pencil in front of the runway's ant. It crawled up the eraser. Miss Mackle popped the ant into the open of the ant house, then put the roof back on. Two ants are missing, she said. Her hair was in her eyes, and one of her high heels were off. They're going to get us, Sydney shouted. Okay, there's a picture. There's a big picture. It's uh, Harry. Harry is so happy. So that's Ida. That's Harry's happy. Well, but Miss Mackle's a little too happy. She's pouring the ants into the ant city. You see, just the ant city. The ants. Sydney's all grossed out. Sydney, Miss Mackle said with her teeth clenched, you must. We must remain calm. Harry stood at the front of the teacher. As your ant monitor, I'll find the missing ants. And then he gave her a salute. Just don't touch the ant, Miss Apple insisted. Harry took out her took out his lunchbox. He unwrapped his sandwich and scraped some peanut butter. Onto his finger. Danny put his finger under the science table and waited. Miss Mackle put her shoe back on and pushed her chair out of her face. I think everyone should return to their desk now. I found them, Harry shouted from under the table. Everyone bent down to um, look down and look, including Miss Mackle. There were two runaway ants, ants on Harry's finger. Miss Mackle grabbed a pencil and quickly picked them off and then dropped them down into the opening of the ant city. Harry flashed a big smile. I told you to find them. Miss Mackle frowned. I told you not to touch the ants. 
Look at your finger. Everyone did it. There's two red marks. He got bit when he was playing. Look, there's Miss Mackle all mad at Harry. Harry's finger, look at it. It has two bites on it. Dan's the hair like it. I think you should go to the nurse, Miss Michael said. And when you come back, you'll see another name on the monitor chart next to the ant monitor. Harry put his head down as he walked into the nurse's off to the nurse's office. The next morning, Harry was real quiet. He didn't join a conversation about ants at the science table. They buried their bur they buried their own dead. I said they buried their own food. Harry said, "E." Ooh, yeah, Sydney replied. Look, just ants are kissing. Miss Michael walked over to our table. Ants pass food by kissing. Some sometimes they send messages messages that way. Sydney fell off his chair and rolled over the floor laughing. You may return to your seat, Sydney. Ida's about to feed the ants, and I want only serious sci scientists to watch. Sydney frowned as he walked back to his chair. Harry frowned as he watched Ida doing his job. Ida filled and I dropped her. F okay, look, there's a picture. Ida feeding the ants. Ida filled an eyedropper from a bowl of sugar water. Then, when the teacher removed the roof, Ida squeezed the eyedropper three times into the ant house. I'll get it back, Harry whispered to me. Get what back? My aunt monitor job. I looked at Harry. I could tell he was making plans. How? How? All I have to do is get on the teacher's good side. Then I can ask her for another chance. Just then Harry tipped back on his chair and his, and, and his baseball cards came tumbling out of his pocket. This will put her... Harry, put those things away. Baseball is a distraction in a classroom. Harry got down on his knees and picked up the, his ba baseball cards. I don't any more an antiques from you today, Harry, Miss Mackle said. Antiques, he repeated. That's an ant word. Miss Mackle smiled. Yes, it is. We have lots of ant words in our language. Maybe we could think of some. Harry clapped his hands. Hmm, I thought. Harry might just pull it off. I'll start, Miss Michael said. Antifree. I I had to put some in my car this morning. Antarctica and Ant and and Atlantic. Mary said, looking at the globe. Good. Any other ideas? Any others? The aunt, the teacher asked. Antipasto, Mister Cardin. Me, the, pr the principal said as he showed up at the door. Everyone laughed. My mother makes the best antipasto in the world. So, salami, cheese, black olive, olive. Mm. Just stopped in to visit the ants, he said, sitting down at the science table. Miss Michael, con Miss Michael continued the lesson. Elephant, elephant and panther, I said. Thinking about animals in the zoo, Harry held up Jack and the Bean Bean Stock Giant. Michael like wrote a new words on the board. Fancy, Ida said. Nice try, but that doesn't have a T in it. Miss Michael said, "Ranch." Sydney asked, "That is a ch word." Our class seemed to be stuck. Then Miss Cart. Cardina saw two ants kissing up and he stood up. I've got one romantic. Everyone groaned as he wassled out of the room. I've got the, the best ant word, Harry said. Then he pointed to the December calendar. Santa! Everybody cheered and clapped. And Harry stood up like he had the biggest idea in the world. Why don't we draw pictures of ants carrying these words? We can make them go up to the stairway and invade the second floor. Invasions, I, invasions, I thought. Harry loved them. His Michael looked at the long list of ant words on the board. Let's do it, she said. Everyone took out their, took out their crayons and scissors as their teacher passed up brown paper. I'm making a black ant 
to carry my word panther, I said. I'm making a huge ant to carry my word giant, Terry said. I'm making a big red heart next to my ant, Mary replied. Everyone knew what ant, ant word Ma Mary was going to do in romantic. But all the ants were drawn and cut and the words were neatly printed above the class lined, the class lined up in the hall. Miss Magical walked us to a staircase stairwell. Let's hope we have enough to make it to the top. We will, Harry called out. Then he whispered to me. We have to. She'll be in such a good mood. She'll give me another chance to be an ant monitor. We started taping the ants at the bottom of the wall near the stairs and made a trail going up and down and around the stairway. Wait. When we got to the top, we were one one word short. Everyone sat down and at the on the stairs. I knew we couldn't do it. Sydney complained. Well, Miss Michael replied, replied, "Maybe tomorrow." Sydney Harry made a face. Then he reached in his black back back pocket and pulled out three baseball cards. The Yan Yankees. They and the peanut this year. And answered, everyone shouted. Miss Michael clapped her hands. Bravo, Harry. You, you can we, we, you can make the word today and put it up. We reached the second floor things to and she looked at Harry's baseball cards. Some distractions. Harry beamed at his teacher. If I promise to follow your directions and signs, will you give me another chance to be ant monitor? Miss Hackle put her hand, her hand on Harry's shoulder, shoulder and smiled. All right, Harry. I don't see why you can't. Harry was horribly ha happy. Horrible Harry and the scares. Where it ends. That's chapter two. Miss Mackle stood in front of the room. This Friday we are going to have a square dance. All the boys groaned, expect Harry. I knew what Harry was thinking. He wanted to dance with Song Lee. Harry had a crush on Song Lee since kindergarten. That's when she brought in a potato beetle for, potato beetle for show and tell. She didn't say anything, but she passed the box around with a small striped bug in it. Harry looked at the bug, then at Song Lee. It was true love. Friday afternoon, Miss Mackle led us over to the down to the gym. She had a record under her arm. It was the Virginia Reel. Now, she said, I want the boys to line up behind Sydney and the girls to line up behind Mary. I don't want to dance with her, Sydney said, looking at Mary across from him. Miss Mackle put the record down and she looked at Sydney. She had her hands on her hips. Sydney, one of the reasons I have dancing is that we have to learn manners. Sydney put his head down. We must say thank you to everyone we dance with. Being polite is very important. After a moment of silence, Miss Mackle added, Anybody who doesn't agree can dance with the teacher after school. When we'll go over when we'll go over these rules, Sydney turned green. All the girls giggled. All the boys groaned. I did too. Dancing with the teacher would be deadly. Miss Mackle showed the boys had to bow. Everyone practiced. I made a face. I hate to dance. When I looked across the floor, I looked at my prop partner. It was Song Lee. Harry gave me a jab in the side. Move over, he said. I'm dancing with her. I didn't mind at all. There were more boys, more boys than girls, and no one was standing next to Song Lee. You have missed out, since Michael said to me. I beamed. Dancing with no one wasn't bad at all. Miss Mackle then showed us how to do the re 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 Virginia reel. Harry walked over and took Song Lee's hands. He wanted to get ready early. Not yet, Miss Mackle said. I haven't even turned the music on. Everybody laughed. Everyone, I mean, everyone laughed. Harry held up a fist. When the music finally did go on, he looked at Miss Mackle turned the music on.
The boys walked across the floor and bowed. The girls walked across the floor and curtsied. Now let's see the Virgin Real, Miss Mackle called. Sydney walked over and took Mar Mary's hands. His eyes were closed. They sashayed down to the center and they did, and then they joined their lines. You didn't stop and twirl, you didn't stop and twirl her under your arm, Miss Mackle complained. Harry was next. She walked over and took Song Lee's hands and then they sashayed down the center. She stopped, put his arm and Song Lee twirled around, then twirled around and then cursed. Harry bowed so low his, cur his curly hair touched his knees. Bravo, Miss Mackle said. Look. Harry flashed his white teeth. Song Lee looked down at, his, at her black shoes. When I came down with Miss X, everyone laughed. The next time we went to the line, we had new partners. I had Ida, Sydney, and Song Lee. When Sydney went over to take Song Lee's hands, he had his eyes, clo eyes closed again. He didn't want to dance with a girl. Instead of looking where he was going, he walked right into her, and they bumped heads. Song Lee put her hand, her hand on her forehead. There was a big bump and a red mark on her forehead. She was trying not to cry, but everyone could see the tears on her on her cheek. Harry raised a fist at Sydney. Miss Mackle sent Song Lee to the nurse. Then she said, "We will have one more dance, Sydney. You must be more careful. He should keep his eyes open." I said. Miss Mackle walked over to Sydney. Were you dancing with your eyes closed? Sydney shook his fist, his head. Nope, they were wide open all the time like this. The class stared at Sydney's eyes. They looked like giant white gumballs. Then he made then he made them re revolve around and around. Miss Mackle turned to put the needle on the record. Harry raised two fist fists. I knew what he was thinking. Double revenge. When he returned to the classroom, Song Lee was sitting in her chair with an ice bottle held against her forehead. Look, here's a picture. Just before a three o'clock bell rang, Harry offered to take the bottle back to the nurse for her. Song Lee thanked him and then went out of the class to get her coat. As the rest of the class class lined up to go, Harry Harry said, Hey Sydney Meet me at the corner. I have a little present for you. You do? Sydney said. He flashed his white to white teeth. I do. Sydney waited for Harry at the corner. What are you gonna give? What what are you gonna give me a present for? What are you giving me a present for? He asked when he suddenly saw Harry. For that trick you did in dancing today, trick. Sydney couldn't remember. You bumped into Song Lee because. You bumped into Song Lee because your eyes were shut. Yeah, she even had to go to the nurse with the. Alligator purse, Sydney said, bursting into laughing. Laughter. So where's my present? Right here, Sir Harry said, flipping the ice bottle and pouring it down Sydney's back. Yeah, that's cold, Sydney screamed as he ran up the street, waving his hands in the air. I'll get even with you just for this. Just wait, I looked at Harry. Where did you get that bottle of ice water? So from Song Glee, I told, I told her. I told her I would return the bottle to the nurse. And then Harry flashed his white teeth. I never said I would return the melted ice inside. I cracked up. Oh, Sydney had it coming, Harry mumbled. I waited at the school steps when Harry, when Harry, while Harry returned the empty bottle to the nurse. Sometimes when Harry tells you he's going to do something, he leaves the horrible part out. There's a big picture. There's a big picture. It shows a picture of there's Doug and some people are walking home. There's Doug. 
There's Harry pouring some ice water into Sydney's back. It should be cold. Chapter 3 Horrible Harry and the Deadly Fish Tank We have a fish tank in room 2B. Last time Harry and I counted, there were 25 fish swimming around in a, in a 20 guppies, 4 neon fish, and 1 black molly. Then th there was a horrible money. This is how it happened. Sydney came to school mad. He was mad about Harry putting ice water down his back on Friday. Even his hair looked angry. It stood at and Sydney prob probably didn't bother combing it. Miss, ha Miss Mackle looked at the monitor chart. Boys and girls, I have announced the, the week's new monitors. Sydney is the messenger. Doug is the paper monitor. Ida is the ant monitor. Mary is a plant monitor. Song Lee is the is sweeper. And when she finally got to Harry, she said, Harry is the fish monitor. Harry immediately got, Harry admi admitted, immediately got up and went back to feed the fish, feed the fish. He turned on the light in the tank and took roll. Carefully, he recorded the number in the fish roll book. Then he checked the temperature. It was at the green part of the thermometer in 70, 80 degree range. At lunchtime, Harry fed the fish, then lined up behind me in the cafeteria. I have my favorite dessert, Doug, he said. Two pieces of mom homemade fudge. I'm saving it for us on the way home from school. I drooled. I know how good Harry's mother's fudge it was. Chocolate, nutty, and mmm, good. After lunch when we were working on math, Harry walked back to check the tank. Then he shouted, the black molly is Okay, look, here's a picture. Then he shouted, The black molly is floating on the water! She's dead! Everyone rushed back to the tank. Miss Mackle opened the cover of the tank and took out the net. She scooped up the dead fish. Then she put her finger in the water. Why? The water is hot. Someone has been fooling with the temperature knob. There's Miss Mackle and there's fish tank. And the black molly's in that little net. Everyone looked at the temp to monitor. Who do the 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 the, 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 the Curry was way above the green stone. Who would do such a horrible thing? Miss Mackle exclaimed. Everyone looked at Harry. I did too. Harry loves to do horrible things. Miss Mackle waited for someone to speak. Sydney spoke first. Harry is a fish monitor. He did it. Do you know anything about this? Miss Mackle asked Harry. Harry shook his head. Miss Mackle said he wouldn't be doing doing theater that afternoon. She didn't feel like doing anything fun. She was too she was too disappointed. We just worked at our seats the rest of the afternoon. It was a long day. When Harry lined up at 3 o'clock, no one wanted to stand next to him. Expect me. How do you think I did it? Harry asked as we walked home. I didn't say anything. I wasn't sure. Doug, Harry said. I wouldn't do anything horrible. That horrible. I planned on being a great scientist someday. I, with you, remember? I would never take the life of a single living thing. Not a beetle or an ant or a single blade of grass. I knew Harry would never mow the lawn. He told me his mother she couldn't kill the grass. We walked home without talking. We didn't even eat Terry's homemade fudge. Homemade fudge. He just didn't feel like it. The next morning, Harry made a pump syrup and put it by the fish tank. It was a picture of the Tom Thumbstone and a uh, and a graveyard. It was God bless God bless her black Molly. Then in the top part was a bunch of fish with yellow wings and halos flying around. What's that up there? I asked. Fish heaven. He replied. Miss Michael started the morning as usual with a conversation. 
Boys and girls, we need to talk about our fish. You're responsible for them. Somehow we made an error. Sydney raised his hands. Harry is a fish monitor. He loves to do horrible things. Harry did it. He should stay after school. Then he sat back in his chair and smiled. I looked at Sydney. Then it dawned on me. Revenge. That was that's what Cindy wanted. He wanted to get to get even because even because Harry had put put water down his back. Harry raised his fist at Sydney. I wouldn't cook a fish like that. Prove it, Sydney replied. Harry, Miss Michael said, Do you know anything about how the black Molly died? Harry shook his head. Everyone made a face. No one Believed Harry but me. Did anyone see come someone at the fish tank just before the lunch bell? I asked. Sung Lee had her hand in the air for the first time. Yes, Sung Lee, Ms. Michael said. Did you see someone? Softly, Sung Lee spoke. I see Sydney by the tank just before the bell rang. He reached, re reached behind where the knob is. As Sidney sank down in his chair, Miss Mackel glared at him. Sidney looked at a teacher, then the class, his face turned red. I didn't mean to kill the fish fish, I just I just just what? Miss Mackel asked. Wanted to get Sidney's voice got softer and softer. Harry in trouble. We'll talk about it after school, Miss Mackel said firmly. See? Miss Mackel said firmly. I'm glad Well now now they know the real person who did it. Sydney. He's so something is There's Harry all happy. Harry looked over at Song Lee and beamed. Harry really isn't that horrible. On on this, on a scale of one ten, he probably is seven for hor horribleness. Then I noticed that Harry got up and got his lunchbox. He took something out and of it and gave it to Song Lee. It was two pieces of homemade fudge. Forget that seven. Anyone who gives my fudge away to a girl is a ten. Look, Doug's saying that he really wants that fudge. See? Chapter four. Horrible Harry in the class picture. Tuesday, everyone came to school looking very neat. It was picture day for room 2B. How nice everyone looks, Miss Michael exclaimed. We looked at the teacher's hair, though. It was really, it was really curly, and it looked red. Did you dye your hair, Mary asked the teacher. Miss Michael's face turned red. No, I just, her voice got soft, softer. Just use red rinse. Look there. There's a picture. There's a picture. It's, not, don't look at this picture yet. There's a picture. Um, Miss Miss Mackle. Uh, so she's in red, and there's Mimi asking Miss Mackle. You look pretty, Harry said, and then he flashed his white teeth. Thank you, Harry said. You look quite nice in your suit and tie. My mother ordered it. My mother made me wear it. She's ordering pictures for all my relatives for Christmas. Will we get free combs this year? Sydney blurted out. Let's hope so, Mary said. You need one. Everyone looked at Sydney. It's her stuck out all over his head. Miss Mackle took out a red attendance, attendance book. Let's see. Everyone is here expect Song Lee. Song Lee? Look, there's Harry and Harry and Doug. They have combs in their hands. We looked around. She wasn't at her desk or next to the fish tank or sharpening her pencil. Harry frowned. Do you think she's sick? Do you think she's sick? I hope not, Miss Michael said. It would be nice, so nice to have everyone present for the picture. Just then, Song Lee appeared at the door. Harry's eyebrows shot up. Miss Michael went to meet her. Why, Song Lee? You look beautiful. Song Lee looked down at the floor. Her hair, her hair was in a bun. Two white flowers were pinned on each side of her hair. She was wearing a long dress and a flowered, flowered sash. 
When Song Li looked up, she said, "Mother w- want to s- mother want to send pictures picture to Korea for my re- for my rela- relatives." Re- rela- relatives. Miss Michael smiled. They'll be very pleased. Just then, Miss Foxford, Mrs. Foxford appeared at the door. The photograph was ready for room to be in the gym now. As we walked down the hall, I said to Harry, "We probably won't get to stand next to each other. I'm four inches. I'm four inches taller than you." I know, Harry replied. I'll probably be next to the King of Harados. I knew who said Harry meant. I knew who Harry meant, Sydney. Maybe you'll get lucky, I said. What do you mean, Harry asked. You might be next to Song Lee. Harry looked at me and grinned. You might be next to the teacher, Harry said. I frowned. When we got in the gym, a mother passed out orange combs. Another mother went up to each student and helped comb, comb their hair. When she got to Sydney, she couldn't get his snarls out. Then the chrome broke. broke. Okay, Katie, it's a photographer said a line up over here. Look, there's a mom. Try to do this. Look at Sydney. So hard to comb his head. His hair. Let's see. When he saw Harry in his suit and Song Lee in her outfit, he said, Oh, la la, look who's getting married today. Everyone laughed and giggled. Harry held up a puppy fist. I'm going to be a great scientist when I grow up. I'm not getting married. Song Lee kept looking at her sash. Well, you two make a great couple. You can hold a sign that says, Miss Meckle's second grade class. Sydney crackled so loud he was hurting my eardrums. And you two gorgeous redhead, redheads can stand together, the photograph, photographer said, getting with Sydney and the teacher together. Everyone laughed again. I expect Sydney. Hey, good looking, the photographer said to me. You get to stand you get to stand between two lovely ladies. I made a face and stood between Ida and Mary. Okay, kitty, the photographer said. If you heard that, that was my brother. Say hamburger with pickles and cheese. The photographer flashed his camera. Now say li- now say liver and onion. The photographer flashed his camera again. I was hoping the picture would be over real soon. I was surrounded by girls. This is spaghetti and meatball. The photographer the photographer flashed his camera one last time. Look, here's the photographer. Did you hear that? That's my brother. He's playing with the edit. Look, there's a class picture. I hope I didn't close my eyes, Ms. Mackle said. Harry put the sign down on the floor. Then he lined up by the ramp. I could tell Harry was miffed about something. He took off his tie and stuffed it in his pocket. When I, when I stood next to him, he whispered, I don't like that guy. You mean the photographer? Harry nodded. You mean the photographer? Harry nodded. Yeah, I said. I think he should open a restaurant and sell liver and onion, spaghetti and meatballs and hamburgers with pickles. Harry looked. Harry looked at me and then at the at the photographer. That guy was acting so dumb I wouldn't even buy a picture or a pickle from him. Harry always tells the horrible truth. The Okay, that was a great book. Um that was a great book. That was a great book and today And um, the next book I'm going to be reading is Harry the Homeless Puppy. It's a puppy story. That one's not by Susie Klein. It's, about, it's, a, it's, from, it's from another author. I don't remember the title, but I'm going to be telling you the title. Okay, that's the end of this book. I just had four chapters. I read it. So, at the end, so be safe and take care. Bye.